Good day. Welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. Today, sorry, I got to look over here. Today I want to discuss diabetic horror stories. Well, they're not like boo, but they're stories, maybe some things I could have done better. But let's start things off with a fun and exciting game. My blood sugars are at 13.4, which is starting to get up there. It's not over 15 yet. Could be when I do, a, I'll do a blood test after I've done this. My worst horror story. Ah, uh, my mother and stepfather had gone to Fiji to build a gift from the Canadian government to the people of Fiji, building the School of Natural Resources in the university out there. And I was all excited. I was able to fly down. You know, we got, I had snazzy, white jeans, big mistake, and I had a kind of brown and white floral top. Floral, wasn't really floral, it was more a leafy, like palm leaves type shirt. So, my aunt came and picked me up. We went out to her place because she lives in Richmond close to the airport and we were driven out to the airport in the morning got on a I think they called it a stretch DCA shows how old this story is well it's 78 79 so yeah I got into the plane, I sat down, and back then we had to refrigerate all our insulin. There wasn't cold packs or anything fun like that. And I flew out. And we had a stack, but back then you didn't really take a shot for a stack. It's not like today with, oh, you count the carbs and you take a shot of insulin. Back then there was nothing like this. Oh, what's this? Ah, let's take a look, shall we? We are now 15.3 with arrows going straight up. Now I'm going to, after I've done this, I'll take a correction. <sighs> For sure. But we're flying away. We come down. We land in Honolulu. I think we left Vancouver like at 8 a.m. or so. Before landing, I had asked for my insulin back. And the flight attendant said, no, no. You don't have to worry about it. Just keep it in the fridge. So that was fine. I sat there. We could get off the plane, but I remember, you know, they brought food on and everything onto the plane. And, you know, it was quite hot. I remember that. It's Honolulu, so yeah, subtropical, if not tropical. But the temperatures were getting quite warm. And I thought, 
it's a good thing I um, kept the insulin in the fridge, or I thought. We took off again, heading to Fiji, to Nandi, Fiji, where the international airport was. Dinner or a lunch came out. And I asked for my insult. I should have known something was up because the flight attendant I asked went to take a look, couldn't find it, went back and forth, I guess, with checking the other gala, galleys, galleries, galleys, and they couldn't find my insulin. Well, at this point, I'm starting to panic. And we got one of those messages over the PA. Is there a doctor or a medical professional on the plane? And I thought, oh, great. And this doctor said, well, exercise will help keep you, keep your blood sugar down. And so, just sorry, there's something on the phone here. Before I knew it, he had me walking from first class all the way back. So the joke I keep saying is, I walked from Hawaii to Fiji. <laughs> Didn't really walk, but you know, the joke, ha 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 ha. <sighs> It was an experience. When I landed, we came in and before anyone else, I was escorted off the plane. Sort of was whisked through border or customs or whatever you want to call it and met up with this doctor and said, well, you could go to the hospital and they will give you some insulin. So we went to, we found the hospital and went in there and there's cats all over the place. It's their pest control for mice was rats. I couldn't believe it. But, okay, they gave me the insulin. I left. At this point, I didn't know the difference between U40 and U100 and U60 or U80. So here I was using U100 needles on insulin. It's amazing I didn't get sick. But I kept going and then I ran out of needles. And we went to we saw a doctor. And Let's just say at that time, the medical establishment wasn't as high class, or not high class, sorry, as I thought, like sanitary procedures and everything, as there was in Canada. We talked to this doctor, his, we took him one of my last syringes and he looked at it and said, you use this and you throw it away? Ah, you can use it like 10 times before you have to throw it away. Mm, I've told this story to my diabetic nurse and she nearly, wait, what? 
So I went through most of my time in Fiji trying to control the amount of insulin I gave and we made it but the minute I landed in Vancouver I had to get more insulin but another little part to this story was the airline finally said okay yeah we admit it was our fault so they contacted my doctor and we got my regular insulin sent down from Fiji. From Fiji, from Vancouver to Fiji. And it was like, I put that in, the correct dose, and I started to feel like a hundred times better. Oh my God. So, my doctor gave a little bit extra insulin, which was a good thing because we went to book my flight back and there was no room for like another three weeks. So I had three more weeks in Fiji. Oh, it was such a tough life. But I had to get an extension on my pass, passaporte passport and I went and they said well we have no entry for this number and I we had to go back to the airline to get approval to find a person working that night who remembered flagging us through because I had to see a doctor <sighs> I don't really want to go through so through that again one little side I can remember, and this had nothing to do with the horror story. I remember sitting down, they took her out to dinner to quite a nice restaurant in the hotel, and all I could do was try to stay awake. I uh, went up to the... Um, hotel room and passed out and slept. It was one of the best sleeps I ever had. But, uh, that's my biggest horror story. Kind of fun one too, so I thought I'd tell that one. Let me know your horror stories. My email I think is probably up there. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.